expat stacker and today I'm coming with you with a short discussion topic video um, and that has to do with the manipulation of the gold and silver price um, the idea for this video came to me after a few discussions I've been having with other stackers recently some of it is through personal messages some of it is through comments on some of my videos and some of it is by um, even other videos um, by other stackers and I'll reference those channels as we get into this um, but basically many people who stack silver and gold believe that the gold and silver price is manipulated that it's artificially suppressed um, and held down um, so if you believe that then the next question that comes up or the next two questions is well who's doing that and why now there are many reasons um, and many people um, who could be blamed or accused for this. And what we're gonna do in, in this video is take a, a look at some factual information, some actual primary source documents from the US government. Um, and we'll get into discussing about how, who, why, when it happened and everything else like this. But just a little bit of background information in case you are not aware. Um, in 1933, Executive Order 6102 made it a criminal offense for U.S. citizens to own or trade gold anywhere in the world, um, with the exception of jewelry and a few collector's coins. But basically, it was illegal to own gold bullion. Um, these restrictions were starting to relax in the mid-60s. Um, investors could invest in gold certificates, um, but they couldn't obtain physical gold. However, by 1975, um, Americans could, once again, freely own and trade gold. So that is important background information for what we're about to look at right now. Um, now, from 1933 to the mid-60s, obviously the government could completely and totally control the price of gold because they owned it all. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of negative press out there from financial networks to big, you know, big shot investors who everybody knows their names and they, they talk down on gold and everything like that. But you know, gold has, you know, over 5,000 year history of being money. It's withstood the test of not just time, but economic shocks, um, you know, population crises, different, all different types of governments, um, all different types of organizations of society. So, and governments and central banks around the world um, have always and continue to always have reserves of gold. So if it's so, you know, horrible, then why do uh, the governments and the central banks hold on to it so much? Um, that's a, I think that's a pretty fairly easy question to answer. Now, um, what we're going to look at today here is not a news story it's not a conspiracy thing we're looking at an actual piece of history here because this is a declassified document um, from the u.s embassy in london and this document was um published on it was sent um 1974 december 10th 1974 at 708 p.m on which was a tuesday um and it was declassified in the summer of 2005. Now, what does this document say? What is it about? Well, it's about the Department of the Treasury. And as I told you, gold was become was going to become legal again for US citizens to own and hold and trade physical gold bullion. So that's what this uh, cable is about. And uh, here, this is not that long. So don't just click off because you think I'm going to read, read some really long article just Bear with me here, okay? The beginning here has a summary of what this whole thing is about. So it says, the announced auction of official gold by the US Treasury was praised by London gold dealers as being timely and highly contributory to a more stable market. Now here, what they're talking about is 
uh, the futures gold market, the paper contracts, paper gold, right? Um, and they're saying that a stable price on gold would be a good thing. So some fear, however, that should a single bid for the entire 2 million ounces, so they were going to issue 2 million ounces of paper gold, basically. So should a single bid for the entire 2 million ounces be forthcoming, price prices might increase rapidly possibly as high as $250 an ounce. Um, they anticipate major impact of U.S. ownership will be the formation of a sizable gold futures market, but rather small demand for physical holding of gold other than coins after a brief initial surge following deregulation. Okay, so that's basically the summary of, but there's parts of this that are, um, we, we, should, we should look at and get into. So um, here, they're saying uh, in London to, uh, to private ownership of gold by Americans, ASST Finnet, which I guess is the name of the, some ta task force that they created to get some intelligence or reconnaissance of information, obtained reactions from major London wholesale gold dealers. And they named those companies, which are the gold dealers, to announce the auction of gold by U.S. Treasury. While the underlying reasons differed, the consensus of the dealers was that the move by the U.S. was laudable. That means that they applauded the move. They liked the move. In most cases, they stated that the action was unexpected. The timing of the decision was praised as being foresighted. Uh, announcement of the sale prior to the January 1st, 1975 date, which again was the date where Americans could once again legally own, hold, and trade, buy, sell, physical gold bullion. So um, announcing the, the futures, the gold paper market before that was viewed as timely since there's mounting evidence that much of the recent increase in the price of traded gold has uh, resulted from anticipation of large American demand following the deregulation date. Even though the dealers themselves expect the physical demand to be rather short-lived. So basically, other countries around the world were getting worried as January 1st, 1975 approached because all these Americans who were not allowed to own physical gold bullion were now going to be allowed to buy it once again. So they were, the people around the world were worried that, you know, America is a big country, has a big population, and they have lots of money. Um, so they were worried that it would drive the price of gold sky high. So making uh, paper gold would be a way to mute that or blunt that effect of skyrocketing gold prices. So the second part here says, this much said, a recurring com uh, comment, both in conversation with the gold dealers, as well as in numerous telephone calls received by the embassy, is that if one buyer, or more likely one buyer from a particular country, Kuwait was often cited, decided to place a bid for the entire 2 million ounces of U.S. gold being auctioned either at market prices or possibly at higher than market prices. Then the effect of the U.S. auction, which is initially viewed as having a stabilizing force on market prices, would be the opposite. So there are, the, the U.S. Treasury is offering 2 million ounces of paper gold, but if someone called and said, I want to buy it all, that would have an opposite of stabilizing effect. That would probably make, um, that would be like the worst case scenario for people who are worried about the gold price um, being, you know, increasing. So um, dealers stated that should such a single bid be accepted by the US, then the markets would interpret this as a single there Heretofore, unrecognized demand was persistent and prices would increase rapidly, possibly as high as $250 an ounce or even higher. By today's standard, that's funny, but remember, this is written in 75. So, In the dealer's view, the only counteracting to the above hypothetical situation would be for an immediate, and then this is the end of a page here, so it's all this blah, 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 announcement of additional sale of like or larger quantities. So they just print more paper contracts for gold. As we all know, this is actually the main part that I wanted to get into. As we all know, part of gold's value is that it is uh, limited. 
in supply and quantity and it's very rare so this shows you that you know we, we hear all the time about the 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 phrase if you don't hold it you don't own it and and we also hear that you can't print gold well this is an an, an example of uh governments uh working um to control the price of gold and they're doing that through paper gold contracts so they're just saying well if the demand gets too high then just print more uh contracts offer more contracts on gold and that will just you just increase the supply so therefore it wouldn't be as bad it wouldn't drive the price up as high so the dealers with whom we spoke stated that uh, to date there had been no significant activity in the gold markets um, by official monetary authorities or arab countries they also expressed the view that should market conditions indicate that prices may rise rapidly in the near term a large volume purchase from oil producing areas should not be totally discounted or unexpected. While most dealers did not foresee a large Arab demand for gold to be held as official reserves, they did see demand from the oil producing areas with Middle East residents being potential active traders in the gold market, especially in the absence of official sales to stabilize prices. In reply to questions, there were not clear whether this type of activity might come from official authorities or only from private sources, but reiterated the idea that oil producing areas were the only ones with sufficient funds to make large physical gold purchases in current market conditions. So they're identifying the, you know, people who had the financial resources to make such large quantities of, of uh, purchases of gold physical gold bullion that it would it would destabilize the price and drive it upwards um, here the, this section is about the major impact of private US ownership so here they say to the dealers expectation will be the formation of a sizable gold futures market so they're saying this this um, sizable gold futures market um, that's going to be created would be a good thing each of the dealers expressed the belief that the futures market would be of significant proportion and physical trading would be minuscule by comparison also expressed was the expectation that large volume futures dealing would create a highly volatile market in turn the volatile price movements would diminish the initial demand for physical holding and most likely negate long-term hoarding by u.s citizens so uh, one reason that, that people um, buy and hold physical gold bullion over time is because of its wealth preservation properties, because it is limited and because it um, does increase its value over time. Um, however, uh, as, as you know, Juice made a great video about um, the papers, the uh, gold and silver paper markets. I'll leave a link in the description of this video to his video he talks about um, how they determine the price and uh, how the paper markets work and how the contracts work um, and here basically they're saying that there will be enough volatility that where people will want to trade it on paper rather than having to deal with the physical and also because having a paper gold market will uh, make it more like almost like a stock where it wouldn't have like this long-term you know wealth preservation property um, and people will just want the paper stuff and not the actual physical bullion um, and then here it says as to this is the end as to future demand by u.s citizens for gold most dealers did not foresee demand um, for physical gold holding as significant with the exception of initial surge during the first two to three months of the year following deregulation they did not feel that U.S. citizens on the whole were uh, psychologically prepared to switch from small-scale gold coin purchases to large-scale long-term bullion hoarding. Several expressed the view that the demand for coins after the initial surge would most likely be such that it could be met from within should the U.S. decide to mint gold coins for such purposes. And that's the end of the cable. Um, and of course, we know that um, since the mid 80s, the US Mint has been minting the Silver Eagle and the Gold Eagle. So perhaps, um, and, and the gold and silver future market is quite large. Um, and there's the comics. So I think that maybe 
they understood that there was going to be this big demand for silver and gold and they're basically trying to discuss how to um, control the price um, and keep the price low um, so that is price suppression that is price manipulation um, why they're doing that well uh, you know that could be um, something that you have to fill in the blank on but let's take a look at another article here so this guys again this is not an article that i just read to you this is a declassified cable that was sent from the u.s embassy in london to the uh, secretary of state's office now what we're going to look at is an actual article um, i've covered this story before but jp morgan fined 1.26 billion for manip manipulating precious metals and the treasury market um, and I'm not going to go through all of this because I've already talked about this before on my channel, but basically at the highest levels of JP Morgan Chase Bank, they uncovered a nearly decade long, uh, scandal where, um, it cost, you know, us traders in these, uh, gold and silver markets over $300 million, um, who people who are participating in the precious metals markets. Lucy Stacks was commenting on one of my videos. It was the weekly restack. And I, I commented that, you know, some um, news uh, about banks being fined for, you know, corruption and, and um, fraud and scandals. And I said that it is part of their business model because they pay these fines, but the fines are much less than the profits that they make for these uh, criminal schemes. And Lucy Stacks, I think, very correctly pointed out that they most likely price in these fines and penalties into their business model so that they can remain profitable. It's just the cost of doing business. And it's the same thing with this JP Morgan Chase. Um, how much money did they make over? It says that the other participants in the market lost 300 million, but how much did JP Morgan uh, make off of this uh, scam as well by su suppressing the price? I'm pretty sure that it was a lot more than the fine that they paid and no one went to jail. All of the people who committed these acts are still in their positions at the bank and there were no leadership changes at the bank or anything like that. So you can read these articles by yourself. I'm not going to go into it, but basically what we have here is a pattern of behavior of government um, bodies and um, huge institutional banks um, manipulating both gold and silver markets and um, you know i just have to ask you guys uh, what kind of economic model is it where you have these huge um, basically financial corporations and the government both colluding to uh, further their, their economic interests at the expense of the citizens. Um, you can look up for yourself the economics of fascism, uh, corporatism, and um, you know what role corporatism plays in fascism and how private property and individual rights are protected under fascism, um, but to further the interests of the state at the expense of the citizens, right? Um, so I would encourage you to look into that. I'm not going to go into that because that's a separate issue, but I want to stay focused on this, you know, manipulation of the gold and silver price. And um, I think we have two very clear examples here. This is just one of many, many examples of the banks manipulating, you know, just caught red handed. They admitted it. They paid the fine of the precious metals markets. And here I've shown you the uh, declassified cable from the U.S. Embassy in London saying we want to control the gold price. We're going to do that through the gold paper market. So, guys, listen. Um, I think that the reasons why they're doing this could be open to speculation. Wherever you're going to have lots of money, and gold is real money, it has been for thousands of years, um, it's withstood the test of, you know, literal millennia and literally all different types of societies and governments and organizations and, um, you know, social conditions and economic shocks and plagues and everything. It's always been money for human beings. It always will be. 
I don't, um, I, I, it, the form that it takes, it could change. Um, I'd be interested to think about, you know, on a philosophical level, how like cryptocurrencies and gold could work together. But um, I think that's highly possible. Um, but basically the point here is that we have clear evidence of whether they get caught, you know, the banks get caught doing it by regulators or the governments themselves are sending cables, you know, which are secret. And then 30 years later, they get declassified. They're admitting to suppressing the price of gold and silver. So yes, it's happening. Why is it happening? That's another story. It's open to a lot of interpretation, but clearly it is happening. So if there was ever a question in your mind as to whether or not the gold and silver price is being manipulated? The answer is absolutely yes. The question as to why, well, you know, that's that's quite open to interpretation, but I don't think it really actually matters. This shows you that it is valuable, that it is real money. So with that said, guys, um, I'd like to encourage you all to think about the um, gold price and the silver price in terms of the, the actual value of a piece of gold or a piece of silver, what it took to extract that and to turn it into a coin or a bar or a round or whatever and send it over here and sell it. And this person had to have the lights on at their store for you to go and buy it and how much that all of that cost. I mean, you could probably literally calculate the cost of that. I would think that that would be a great way to, you know, for you to look up and decide what you think the actual value, what the actual like price, you know, if we have one dollar or one yen or whatever, one unit of, of money, how many units is it cost to actually make that, get that metal, turn it into a piece of bullion and get it into your hands. That's the actual gold price or silver price. I'm not too worried about premiums. I'm not too worried about shipping or whatever. It's all included. And, and you know what? That's all denominated in fiat currency. And that to me isn't real money, you know? Yes, we need it to live. I'm not saying it's not important, but it's also not real money. Um, it's a representation of value or a representation of money. And like I said, it has its place. It could be very important. It could mean keeping the lights on or having enough food for your family. So it's important. Don't get me wrong, but it isn't real money. Okay. So understand that. All right. And once again, I just wanted to point out, this is the reason why I'm making this video is to get you to think about a is gold and silver price manipulated. Yes. B what is gold and silver price? C what is the price of gold and silver? D what does that mean for you? All right. So those are the things that I'd like you guys to think about. Please leave comments down below. Did you know about this uh, 1974 cable? Um, please go check out Juice Stacker's video. Check out Lucy Stacks. Thank you to everybody who commented on my videos. Um, the Sea Monkey Metals uh, made a comment about price manipulation and um, just a lot of great interaction that I've been having with people, private conversations and stuff recently led me to want to make this video. And um, yeah. Let me know your thoughts in the section below. This is Expat Stacker. I'll catch you on the flip side.